Hi, it's Nell, and this video is a beginner's guide to buying houseplants. So, if you are new to the world of houseplants, stick around for this. Now, this could also be called choosing the right houseplant or things to think about when buying a houseplant because there are quite a few things to consider if you want to buy a plant that is going to live and be in it for the long haul. So unlike a piece of furniture which you bring home and it pretty much stays the same, there's not too much you have to do to it except clean it every once in a while, plants need to be cared for and there are certain things to know about that. I have been playing and working with house plants for a long time now so I'm very comfortable with them but you may be confused or intimidated by buying them or finding the right one I've gotten a lot of comments on that so I just wanted to do this to uh, help you out and make the process a little bit easier and I have some of my green friends out here while I am doing this again a video dress so you can look at them and stay, you know if you don't want to look at me the whole time <laughs> but this is my um, panda plant here I'm going to be doing a series on growing succulents indoors which are very easy and I will be pruning it back in that series this is a snake plant satin pothos and this is a cryptanthus or earth star in case you were wondering all of them are very easy care and I've got my points out here on a piece of paper so I don't forget any. There's about 13 of them. I am doing a blog post to go along with this video. There will be a lot more explanation in that, plus a lot of pretty pictures of houseplants. So I thought about this for a while and I also asked Miranda and Brielle who work with me they're new to fairly new to house plant gardening so I have compiled this list so let's get on with it number one is to know the location that's best to know of course because plants grow best in certain light uh, that is the main thing and so it's good to uh, research and know where they are going and actually the research is the number two check out I I've done a lot of care posts on plants I've done uh, videos and posts on low light plants medium light plants high light plants uh, plants that are easy to care for so there's a lot of information out there so you can research what plant is good for your location and speaking of research it's good to know that different plants grow at different rates too like these two are not going to grow too much or too fast whereas the satin pothos grows faster it trails down this succulent i have pruned it like three times they get you know leggy there's plants that just get a lot bigger than when you buy them so do do some research on that conversely there's something like a kentia palm which grows painfully slow and if you wanted a six to seven foot plant and you bought one at three to four feet it's going to take years for that plant to get that big Next is to know what level of care you want to give the plant. Are you going to be a doting plant parent or are you just going to be water every once in a while and go? There are plants that take more care than other plants in terms of humidity and, and you know, watering and that comes under that research category. So next I would advise starting with a smaller plant if you're brand new because uh, they are much less of an investment than a bigger plant is. And I experiment with house plants quite a bit. And if I'm gonna do any experimenting, I want it to be with a four inch plant or a six inch plant that I haven't spent a lot of money on. Know that not all plants do well 
indoors for the long haul, you may see that pretty little maidenhair fern and think, oh, isn't it sweet, because I love them. I would never get one here in Tucson because it is way too dry. I'm gonna be doing a terrarium series. I might try one in a terrarium and see if it would, but just know that there are some plants that do much better for in the long haul than other plants do. Which leads to start with a tried and true plant like the pothos. This is a different type of pothos, but the golden pothos is very common. A snake plant, a zizi plant, they're very easy to grow as a post as something like, as I just said, the maidenhair fern or a prayer plant, which are beautiful, but they just take a lot of humidity. So uh, check that out and see which plants you think would do best in your home that have a good track record. Because for me, even though I've been, uh, you know, hanging out with house plants forever, my dad built a greenhouse um, off our home back in New England when I was like a, a, 11 years old, a very long time ago. <laughs> We're not going to go into that here, but um, I, I really don't want to experiment with plants that much now because I live in the, in the desert and some of it could just be a futile exercise even for someone who has more experience with houseplants like me. Okay, so let's see. What did I have next? Oh, yes. Shop at a specialty or independent nursery if you can. They usually have somebody knowledgeable in houseplants who handles all the buying of them too. For instance, I used to work at Berkeley Horticultural Nursery in Berkeley, California. There was somebody who handled all the houseplants in the greenhouse. He did all the buying and he would usually be there to answer questions. I just worked on the weekends so I could help out in there too, but he, that was his, 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 you know, specialty, his, his, you know, division, what he was in charge of. And that's what a good specialty nursery will have there so that you can ask them questions and get guidance from someone with experience. So that leads us on to the big box stores. They have plants too, like Lowe's, Home Depot, Trader Joe's, all that. Oftentimes they are smushed together. There just is so many of them. So don't pick the first one you see. Be picky, go through it. I was at Lowe's like probably like a year and a half ago or so back when we could talk to people. <laughs> back when we could talk to people, we didn't know this is 2021. We still have that the pandemic. But there was a sweet little woman who was picking out on African violet. And it just, I, I could see there were a lot better ones towards the back. And so I said, do you mind if I help you pick out, out, out a plant? So just go through them because they're so close you can pick them out because there is probably a better one than the one right in the front. And next is look for the name of the plant. It may not be labeled or it may not have the type of plant on it. Uh, that happens, I, I've seen it happens. Sometimes it'll just be labeled four inch foliage or six inch foliage. This oftentimes happens in the bigger box stores, but if you can find out what the name of the plant is, you know, then you can know if that's the plant you're looking for or specifically, or if it's in the same genus. Like for instance, this one I bought at Barrage's Nursery in Phoenix. It still has the tag on it. It says Satin Pothos. So I, I knew exactly, well, I mean, I, you know, I knew what this plant was anyway, but you could you'll know what that plant is because it has the name on it, either a sticker or a tag. And oftentimes with foliage plants, it is a sticker on the grow pot and not like exterior plants will have a tag in there. So look for the sticker. Next is to check the plant. Does it look healthy and good? This is my little 
blue star snake plant and I would look and I would make sure there was no mealy bug or scale in there. A uh, beginner, it might be hard for you to spot insects, but if it looks like there's, you know, something strange on there, it could be. But just, you know, make sure the foliage is nice all the way around and it has a fair amount of it. And next is to check the soil, too. Uh, look at it and see, does the soil look good? Is the soil all the way up in the pot? Most indoor plants it is. When, when I used to have a landscaping you know, business, it you know, used to be more of the exterior plants. The soil was w w way down or the roots were coming out. But um, just look at the soil because, uh, you, know, an, you know, another thing to consider, too, with the soil, has it been kept too wet? Um, and in that case, it'll show up as some white and mildew or some funky stuff on the soil. So check that too. And the last thing that I can advise you to do, not too much to do with buying, but is to learn how to care properly for your plant. That way you and your plant will be a lot happier. And this is something that Brielle wanted me to mention. It doesn't really have anything to do with buying, but it's like when you bring the plant home, you don't need to, you, you most likely don't need to immediately repot it. Some people think that they do. If the soil looks good and the roots aren't coming out the bottom, it's fine. Um, I've only repotted a couple times when I bought a plant home just because it did have roots or or if it's you know fallen out of the pot then you do have to repot it but you have to remember that the plants have been grown in these wonderful greenhouses and they get sleeved smushed into trucks and sent off to wherever and then who knows how long they're where they are for sale and then you bring them home so you know they've already been through a bit so in most cases it is okay to leave your plants in their grow pots if they're not showing signs of stress because most indoor plants do well growing slightly tight in their pots. So I hope this has been helpful to you um, as you go on your beginning journey with house plants. They are wonderful to have in your lives. I love house plants. I'm trying to curb the addiction because I have a lot of plants out outside too. So that's why I'm doing a lot of, you know, succulents and, you know, cacti. So I hope you have found this video to be helpful, especially if you are a beginning gardener. House plants are wonderful to have in your lives. It's a very healthy addiction, very rewarding. I love looking at my house plants every day and I have a lot of them. But anyway, I thank you for all your likes and your subscribes. I really appreciate them. I have quite a few more videos coming your way. Plus we are updating a lot of blog posts on, on the website. So go check those out at joyousgarden.com. And I thank you for watching and let's get into our indoor gardens and make our world a more beautiful place. Thanks for watching. Bye.